ओके स्टूडेंट्स सो दिस इज द सेकेंड यूनिट ओके एंड दिस इज अबाउट द चेंज ऑफ स्टेट ओके बेसिकली दिस यूनिट इज बेस्ड अपन अ फ्यू डेफिनेशन ओके बट नाउ आई शेल टेल यू हाउ द हाउ एक्चुअली द चेंज ऑफ स्टेट ऑकर ओके अगेन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ काइनेटिक मॉडल आई शेल एक्सप्लेन लेट्स ए दिस इज अ मॉलिक्यूल दिस इज अ मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ सॉलिड ओके एंड लेट्स से देर इज एन अदर मॉलिक्यूल एंड जस्ट लुक एट दिस द इंटर मॉलिक्यूलर सेपरेशन इज वेरी स्मॉल हियर ओके लेट मी टेल यू यू रीड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ चेंज ऑफ स्टेट फ्रॉम द बुक ओके सो नाउ लेट्स बैक टू दिस पॉइंट सो आई एम कंसीडरिंग टू मॉलिक्यूल्स टू मॉलिक्यूल्स विद अ स्मॉल सेपरेशन एज दिस इज सॉलिड नाउ we want to change the state from solid to liquid so what we have to do we have to give some heat energy to it we have to give some heat energy to it and as i told in the previous video that when you are giving some heat energy to it that's mean what will happen the molecule is start to vibrate let's say at some uh, at the room temperature the molecule was vibrating uh, between this amplitude with the molecule is vibrating with this amplitude now when you are giving some heat energy let's say it is vibrating with more amplitude it is vibrating with more amplitude okay just leave it now consider the liquid in case of liquid let's say liquid state of the same matter okay let's say the intermolecular spaces are like this this is the intermolecular spaces as this is liquid so intermolecular force will be weak and that is why the intermolecular space will be higher now when the solid the molecule of a um, when a molecule of solid start to vibrate with more amplitude and the amplitude become equal or more than the intermolecular space of solid the solid becomes liquid is it clear the molecule start to vibrates and it is vibrating with a amplitude which is equal to the intermolecular space of the liquid okay then the solid will become liquid okay and when the vibration starts when it absorb the heat energy and in that way absorbing heat solid changes into liquid and further liquid changes into gases so in case of gas when the vibration become more severe more violent okay let's say the amplitude of the vibration become more okay then the intermolecular force will vanish and the molecules uh, become separate and that will generate gas okay so this is the process of transfer of state or the process of change of state okay now actually there are two phenomena so for that we have to know what is latent heat what is this latent heat basically latent is the amount of energy which just change the internal structure of the molecule or the internal structure of the matter not the molecule the internal structure of the matter okay so let's say there is ice this is a piece of ice and the piece of ice is at minus 5 degree centigrade the piece of ice here minus 5 degree centigrade now you just heating it heating it with a burner and the ice is reaching at 0 degree centigrade now the ice is at 0 degree centigrade okay if you heat it further the 0 degree centigrade of ice will changes into 0 degree centigrade of water you will find that at 0 degree centigrade ice and water both can exist now what is the difference between this 0 degree centigrade ice and this 0 degree centigrade water is actually the difference of some internal heat energy and that is known as the latent heat is it clear so what is the actual function of this latent heat the actual of the function the actual function of the latent heat is like this the latent heat the uh, just increase the amplitude of vibration and in that way it changes the internal structure of the matter 
that's mean it increase the separation between the molecules or the atom and in that way a solid become liquid okay so absorbing the latent heat only only absorbing the latent heat the uh, ch change of state of matter occur is it okay okay and you are heating it further let's say up to 100 degree centigrade then it become water of 100 degree centigrade and if you heat it further it become the vapor of 100 degree centigrade so again here the this is water and this is water vapor so the same phenomena occur here when you giving some heat after 100 degree centigrade it becomes the vapor of 100 degree centigrade here again the same phenomena occur that's mean the vibration the amplitude of the vibration become larger and this phenomena occur thus absorbing the latent heat so what is the function of latent heat the function of latent heat is just change the internal structure of that matter is it clear this is latent heat now i shall tell you what is the what is specific latent heat okay the definition is in your book but let me tell you what is specific latent heat suppose there is 1 gram of water or 1 gram of ice 1 gram of ice only 1 gram of ice and you are changing this 1 gram of ice into 1 gram of water you are changing this 1 gram of ice into 1 gram of water the amount of heat energy you required that is specific latent heat okay so 1 gram of water rise to 1 gram of water and this is known as specific latent heat of fusion specific latent heat of fusion or a specific latent heat of melting is it okay and the temperature at which the phenomena occur that's mean the temperature at which a solid becomes turns into liquid that temperature is known as the fusion point now what is the amount of specific latent heat of fusion the amount of specific latent heat of fusion is actually 336 into 10 to the power 3 joule per kg if i say in uh, si unit okay in that case instead of one gram you have to take one kg okay because we know kg is the si unit so that is why 336 into 10 to the power 3 joule per kg okay so this is the specific latent heat of fusion the values are available in book okay just have a look next is it clear now what is fusion and melting and what is uh, fusion fusion point or melting point okay next what is freezing you just tell me what is freezing freezing is actually very easy when liquid changes into solid that's mean the reverse phenomena when liquid changes into solid and at the temperature when the total amount of liquid will changes into solid and during that process the temperature remain constant that temperature is known as the freezing let me tell you one thing when some amount of solid some amount of solid it can be any amount of solid when some amount of solid is changing into liquid okay its temperature remain constant that's mean let's say this is a 10 kg ice cube 10 kg ice cube at 0 degree centigrade okay and its temperature will remain fixed at 0 degree centigrade until the whole ice cube just melt into water of 0 degree centigrade and that is why this 0 degree centigrade is the melting point of ice is it clear and during the whole process i am telling you several times that during this whole process the temperature will remain constant and that is 0 degree centigrade this is the melting point and as well as the reverse process when the when 0 degree centigrade of water completely changes into ice then also the temperature will remain constant and that is also 0 degree centigrade for this case and that is known as the freezing point and the phenomena is known as the freezing okay now what is condensation condensation means when gas changes into liquid when gas changes into liquid 
and during that phenomena also the temperature remain constant for water uh, the condensation point is 100 degree centigrade we know okay now let me ask you what is boiling you know what is boiling basically when you heat some water it start to boils basically boiling is a, a violent phenomena so when the boiling is start let's say this is water you are heating it with a burner so when the boil boiling starts it its temperature totally become 100 degree centigrade and vapor came out from all places okay so this phenomenon is known as boiling now if this is boiling then what is evaporation evaporation is the process of evaporate some water below the boiling point that's mean boiling occurs for water only at 100 degree centigrade but in case of evaporation suppose some water are here suppose some water is here so evaporation occur can occur at any temperature at less than 100 degree centigrade but there are some basic differentiation difference between boiling and evaporation boiling occur only at the boiling point that's mean uh, at the temperature where the boiling occur but evaporation can occur at any temperature less than boiling point okay boiling occur from the whole body of the liquid evaporation occur only from the upper surface okay let me tell you evaporation depends only on a uh, few factors and that is uh, you shall read that topic in biology okay after uh, then also i am telling you that boiling depends upon the upper surface area of the liquid if the surface area is larger then eva sorry evaporation uh, become uh, more okay then more water will evaporate okay and if there are some flow of wind wind flow then the evaporation will be greater okay if the temperature is high then also the evaporation will become uh, greater okay so these are the process of evaporation evaporation can occur at any temperature there is no evaporating point is it okay so these are the phenomena okay now another point is there what is that that is sublimation what is sublimation this phenomena is little bit different when solid directly changes into when solid directly changes into gas that process is known as sublimation that's mean in that case no liquid state no liquid state is here okay solid directly changes into gas as example naphthalene okay for naphthalene it's is solid and it is directly changes into gas and deposition deposition d e p o s i t i o n deposition is complete the opposite process of sublimation means when gas directly changes into solid or when the vapor directly changes into solid okay uh, there are a lot of examples you just read it from your book okay one topic i have missed that is the consequences of latent heat natural consequences of latent heat i'm giving you one example snowfall okay uh, during the snowfall the weather become a little bit warmer okay during the snowfall uh, weather become little bit warmer the question is why the weather become little bit warmer okay because uh, just let me tell you oh before that let me tell you something suppose there are 0 degree centigrade of ice and 0 degree centigrade of water okay which is containing more heat energy of course the water is containing more heat energy i am not talking about temperature i am talking about heat energy the water is containing more heat energy and uh, what is the amount the amount is this 336 into 10 to the power 3 joule of heat energy it is containing or if you write want to write in calorie then it is 80 calorie of heat the water is containing is it okay okay now let me tell you when the snowfalls occur how the weather become warmer basically snowfall means there are some water vapor in the air and that is turning into snow that is turning into snow so when the water is turning into snow 
then what will happen it must have to reject this amount of heat energy or this amount of heat energy in SI so where this heat energy will go the heat energy will come into the nature okay and it turns the nature a little bit warmer and that is why during the snowfall the weather become warmer okay similarly the weather become very much cold when the snow uh, start to melt why when the snow start to melt that's mean it is absorbing heat energy from the nature it is turning from ice to water that's when it is absorbing heat energy from the nature and when it is absorbing heat energy from nature the temperature of the nature automatically drops okay that is why uh, during the uh, melting of snow or melting of glaciers the weather become cold is it clear okay you will find another consequence that the burning of steam is safer than the burning of water hot water or boiling water because we know that the vapor is contained 537 537 calorie of latent heat this extra latent heat okay or this is in cgs or 2260 into 10 to the power 3 joule per kg amount of extra heat that is why vapor is hotter than the water both the temperature are same okay but it is containing more heat energy is it okay so that is why the burning is more severe okay whatever just read the book this is the end of the unit 2 as well as the first chapter okay uh, there are two exercise in your book you will find exercise 1a and 1b okay you just solve the objective questions and you can send me okay it will be better if you just uh, I can if I can check the uh, homework at the school okay it will be better if you just tell me the uh, questions for which you are professing the problem okay okay thank you bye